Alright, how's it going everybody? It's the Bowling Boy here, and today we're going to be talking about the Elias Cup for Bowling Talks today. Now, the Elias Cup unfortunately isn't going to be held this year in 2021, but they will be holding one in 2022. PBA Commissioner released something saying like there's going to be just more added to it, like more teams and stuff like that, and they're going to have it back in Portland at Bayside, where all those crazy fans are and where all the energy and stuff is. Which is kind of why I think that's not why they're having one in 2021, because they just want to wait until they're back in Portland where it's had the most success. But honestly, I, I could be wrong, but that's what it sounds like. What do you think? Well, I think they're probably, they might be putting it off so they can have spectators back in Portland, because that's probably what makes it as exciting as it is, is to have all the fans yelling and cheering for their favorite teams. It's probably... And that's a big part of it, I think. Yeah. But that didn't stop me from making a uh, PBA League Elias Cup draft. So it's it's pretty long, but I can read off some of the stuff to you. So the orig there were uh, 12 teams in 2019. It used to be eight, and then they added on four, two men, two women. And then I made two, like, miscellaneous teams, one all men, one all women, just in, ca or just in case, because I don't know what... They didn't specify how they were going to add the new teams, if they were going to be all-male, all-female, mixed, or whatever. And then I also did, like, who they're going to drop, uh, who they're going to pick up, and stuff like that. So, just going off of predictions, who do you think is going to win the next Elias Cup? Hard to say, hard to say. I want to say LAX, because they've been close every time, and they haven't yet, so I think it's kind of their time to do something with it but Jason Belmonte's been falling off and seeing as he he's the anchor there it might be difficult for them to pull pull out a win it, especially in two years yeah like I've I want LAX to win really badly just because like all my other favorite teams that I have on the wall have won the wall of fame <laughs> except for Motown and LAX the only problem with LAX that I think that they need to work on is Andrew Kane needs to f work on who he drafts. Because he drafted Anthony Lavery Spar twice, and Anthony Lavery Spar was one of the main reasons why they lost in 2019. 2020, he did better, but he still wasn't that good. I think they need to drop him for someone a bit younger, maybe. Or just a bit, like, you someone know, who's actually on the leaderboard. Because, like, Lavery Spar is not even in the top I 50. I think Lavery Spar. They can drop him. I think Wesley Lowe's going to get picked up into the into the um, Elias Cup. Yeah, definitely. For my two picks for LAX, I say they're definitely going to drop Lavery Spar. They should. And obviously drop Patrick Gerard. He was a mess. You know, actually, Motown Muscle might pick up. The Motown might pick up Wesley Lowe, now that I think about it. Yeah, I was thinking about that, too. For um, LAX, though, these two picks were kind of... I was kind of iffy on him, but I have confidence that they actually one of these guys might get picked up. First pick will be Richie Tees, I think, because, uh, just because him and Stu kind of have a little bond together because they're both from England and stuff like that. They both bowl for Storm. So I feel like, and he was on the second place, uh, the team that came in second place, so he's definitely got some value. Yeah, definitely a solid bowler. And then the second pick for LAX, I think they're going to pick Chris Kelso. I think Chris Kelso needs to make a couple more shows this year, and then he'll be a really solid contender up there. Yeah, that makes sense. The reason I picked him, though, is because, like, he made a really great run, and usually LAX, like, they try to pick. Like, the reason they don't get to pick the greatest picks right away is because they're, like, usually in the middle. They don't come in last, but they don't come in first either. Right, so they never get the first pick. But Yeah. So they have, like middle-of-the-road people. Yeah, so that's why I thought Chris Kelso would be good, because, I mean, he almost averaged, like, 270 for the... Uh, was he in the Western Conference, or what conference was he in for the... I think it was Western. Western. Okay. I think. Yeah, he did, he did really well. And then for Motown Muscle, since I also want them to win either LAX or Motown, I say they're definitely going to drop Matthew McNeil. He did... He performed well. There was nothing wrong with what he did, but... I mean, I just think they're going to drop him and uh, Mitch Hoopé. Definitely going to drop him because, I mean, Motown, you got to keep EJ because he's the star player. Well, keep. So Mitch Hoopé is a very 
good bowler. He bowled well. He just doesn't have the presence of other bowlers. Yeah. So they might drop him because of that. But last year, I think a couple teams kept bowlers that you wouldn't expect them to keep either, though. That so. is fair, yeah. And I say they're also going to... Simonson, I don't... I, I'm i pretty sure they're going to keep him because, I mean, he's like the fifth best bowler in the world. But honestly, I feel like Del Ballard might reconsider, maybe, because of how Anthony Simonson has been late in, or has been acting lately on TV. Did you see how he acted at the uh, uh, PBA playoffs? Did not get a chance to watch it. Oh, well, I'm just going to say he acted like a baby. He was... His, his attitude was awful. Hey, his attitude matches his face. <laughs> And like a baby. <laughs> I definitely think they're going to keep Josh Blanchard because he always performs well at the Elias Cup. He's yeah. he's the fireball. He's always their leadoff guy who does well. He's the one who's supposed to get him fired up and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, a solid part of Baker's is having the energy there. So, I mean, that's a big part of any team event, no matter what level you're at. So, especially for that. It's... And for Motown Muscle, who I think they're going to be draft, or who I think they're going to draft, they're always drafting new people in the Young Guns. I think they're going to pick up uh, Zeke Bait once, because uh, I'm, I'm I don't think the Bruce City Ballers are going to keep him. And then this one's a wild card, but I have confidence that he has a chance of getting picked by them. Anthony Nyer, after he made history with the seven ten, how could you not pick someone like that? I think that. Again, that's another one where you might want to see more from them before you decide, I'm going to take a chance on him. Yeah. I think he's a solid bowler. He bowled very well. Um, but I just think that they need to see more from him before they would pick him. But, again, there's two years in between, so. Yeah, definitely. So he's got more time to practice and stuff. Well, one year. Oh, I mean. I keep saying two, but it's one. Yeah. <laughs> And then, so my prediction for the team who's going to win, depending on who they pick up, I feel like the team that still has a really strong chance is Portland Lumberjacks. They're my favorite team, but I'm kind of like with Jason Belmonte. He's like my third favorite bowler, but you kind of get tired seeing the same team or same guy winning over and over again. Well, I'm not sure on the Lumberjacks just playing the odds game, quote-unquote. Yeah. Um, just winning it three times in a row, I don't think it's ever happened, has it? So Yeah, the only team that's come, kind of come close was the Dallas Strikers because they won 2016, 2017, and then 2018 they lost to the people who won, which was the Silver Lake Adam Splitters. Yeah, so you're going to have that kind of pushing on them, and then depending on who other teams draft, it's going to be really hard to keep up with everybody else especially with all the young people coming in and they don't have like they they're gonna have the bottom picks yeah they're gonna have the last ones so we'll see but i don't think they're gonna win again i think they're gonna be close i don't think they're gonna win because like who they picked last year with uh martin larson and packy hanrahan i because like i had high hopes for martin because he's done well with lax when he was at the elias cup multiple years but Packy, I thought Packy was going to be the main reason they lost. Because, you know, he hasn't had much TV experience. But he surprised me. He did I, really well. I was actually watching Packy, and I I like his form. It's very good. It's very straightforward. But for a lefty, he's able to open the lane up a lot more than other ones. Like if you watch other, even other two-handers left-handed, like Wesley Lowe doesn't really open it up too much. Neither does Yes vs. Fenson, the two most prominent probably two-handers that are lefties on tour. Mm -hmm. So, like, you got them. They don't open it up. They're playing urethane. Wesley threw plastic one time, which, you know, good for him. That's cool <laughs> that he did that. I wouldn't probably do that. Yes, for tried but, throwing plastic at that one tournament in 2017. The uh, key, key word is tried. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he first opening <laughs> shot... The plastic ball somehow hooked all the way and went high, and he left a Greek church, and then he just stopped using it after that. And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no offense, Jesper's like my second favorite bowler of all time. But, I mean, but yeah, Packy's going to be... He's going to be better also this year with more, with more experience, with the Elias Cup, with more experience from bowling these all the tournaments and everything like that. I think he's going to, you know, 
have a solid chance of actually being one of the better players on their team, yeah. especially with the power he creates with his two-handing style. Because, like, the only thing, if from what I've seen at the uh, Elias Cup of 2019, because I watch it every once in a while whenever I get bored, Packy's biggest problem, he needs to work on his spares. That's the only thing I feel like he needs to work on in terms of doing better at the Elias Cup. Because his, his strikes, when he strikes, you know he strikes, because it's, it's a oh, powerful yeah. strike. Well, I saw his, on his YouTube channel... I mm-hmm. saw him. He's been practicing a lot of spares. That's it's good. been mostly spare practice, and I think a lot of people struggle with that. And that's what's gonna make them the best bowler is being able to pick up your spares. Yeah, that's like a make or break thing at the Elias Cup. Because like, I'd say pretty much at least this is like some kind of messed up statistic that I'm coming up with. I'd say about at a minimum about fifty percent of the shots are strikes. Maybe a little bit higher than that. I don't even know if it's fit. Well, now it is. You, I, I think the patterns are a little bit easier now, too, though. Because with all of your modern equipment, with your reactive resin and all of that, I think you're getting into that territory where it's opening the lane up and making it a lot easier to play when you're throwing all kinds of different balls, when you have a ton of revs on a ball, and when you're able to just demand hook from the pocket Mm -hmm. it's like if unless you're playing an animal pattern which generally you're going to play those straighter you're stepping back into your thing and you're not carrying but like when you look at elias cup when you look at the roth holman doubles you're seeing a lot of high scores like troop and svensson had a ridiculously high total yeah like you're not gonna generally see that like if you're bowling on harder shots like flat patterns and stuff like that so i think this that's one reason the scores are so high and then for since we're still on the topic of the portland lumberjacks obviously i'm pretty sure they're going to drop hand hand and uh martin larson because they're definitely keeping troop because i mean he's like the best bowler if it weren't for west malott west malott oh he's uh gonna be destroying the pocket again yeah i can't wait to see him back on the lanes it's always exciting to watch the big nasty back out there Dude, he makes it look so effortlessly the way he throws the ball and just it hits so hard. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then Chris Prather, he's been he's been kind of falling off, but I don't think they're gonna. I don't think Tim Mack's gonna kick him. I I still think he's got a couple years left in him. I think I think if it were between Packy and Chris, you're gonna keep Chris. He's more composed generally, and he's got a lot better at spare shooting, and he's won. Obviously, more titles. So, And for who I think the Portland Lumberjacks are going to pick up, I think they're going to pick up Andres Gomez. And then I think he's, or they're going to pick up Kevin Williams to kind of replace Packy. I'm, I'm not so much thinking that, that they're going to pick up Kevin Williams or Andres Gomez. I don't know. Something about Andres, he hasn't been doing great lately. And I'm not sure if he... I'll say this. He might be their option considering they have the lower picks. Yeah. He obviously for me he wouldn't be my first pick, but he's still a solid bowler. I just don't think that's going to be their first option. Okay. I think they would rather take someone like Packy. Uh actually, you know what? Kevin Williams maybe. I agree with that. He's a solid bowler to take Packy's spot, you know? Mhm. Um, obviously, if they could take Darren Tang, they probably would. But. I, and, all right, now that we're talking about Darren Tang and the Kingpins. Yeah. Actually, let's talk about the Brooklyn Styles and the Kingpins. Do you think that, since Pete and Walter have retired, do you think that they're going to still play in the Elias Cup, or do you think they're done with the Elias Cup, too? That's a good question, because I know that Walter still does the PB, he does PBA 50 as well as the the PBA tournaments he does both of them so it would be interesting to see if Pete is leaving that behind I think Walter will probably come back to the Elias Cup because he said it's a lot of fun he enjoys doing it too so if he's able to come in and do that I think Walter will come back Pete I'm not so sure but Pete loves to compete with everybody and seeing as how it's a Baker format and you're not like, trying to be, 
you're not trying to score the highest for yourself. You're scoring the highest for your team. Mm-hmm. He makes a ton of spares. So he's like pretty much a guaranteed closed frame. So I think he might come back for that reason. Because, like, yeah, he's competing on the PBA 50 Tour, too, and he's done pretty well. Uh, he qualified, because, like, I was reading this article, and he qualified for, like, most of the first PBA tournament, and he ended up losing to, it was either Michael Haugen Jr. who went, on, who went on to win, or he lost to someone else who went up against Michael Haugen Jr. But, yeah, I did this kind of, like, worst-case scenario thing if Walter and Pete were to just quit the Elias Cup, too, which I hope they don't. I like both of them. And I think they're really good assets to the team. But it, let's just say if they were to drop them, uh, let's see. NYC Kingpins, I think they're going to drop uh, Kyle Sherman and Osku Palerma. Kyle Sherman, I mean, he's just been falling off. I don't know why, what's been going on with him, but he's just been falling off a lot. You know, since he switched to Storm, he's also surprisingly which I wouldn't have expected, but he's been going down. Yeah, I didn't I didn't expect that either. I don't, I'm not sure if he just isn't matching up with something there or if he's just missing out on part of his game, not coming coming up strong through uh through the later tournaments this year and we'll we'll see how he does over the year though. We still ha he still has time. Yeah. Like we got all the way up until the 2022 season. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know. Because, like, he said in one of his videos, because I'm subscribed to Brian and Kyle, he said that the ball reaction isn't the problem. He just says it's him. He says that he's always making bad shots at the worst possible time and that he needs to work on a spare game more. That's what he said. But, I mean, you never know. I think he might be getting too fast with his feet. and That might be a problem because I've watched him bowl. He's, he's obviously one of one of the better bowlers out there still. And his form just... looks his form looks really fluid. I like his form. Oh yeah, dude. If I was a one hander wink wink. <laughs> if I was a one hander, I would probably want to throw it like him, you know. They just one of the best forms I see for a power player. And then Osku, I mean I don't really think I need to say much. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't even know who Osku Palerma is at this point. He hasn't made a TV show since twenty nineteen and it, he didn't even win. Or come close to winning. You know, he's been doing a lot with his game. He's shooting spares two-handed now. I think it's going to help, but I don't know if anybody wants to take a risk on it. Mm-hmm. Like, he hasn't, like you said, he hasn't been doing anything. He's just been bowling a lot of tournaments and not winning any. Yeah. Not even making shows. Yeah, so. he's he hasn't even come close. He's not even in the top, like, because, like, I look at the rankings every once in a while. He's not even in the top 50. Yeah, I mean... There's, like, a lot of no-names that are ahead of him, which is kind of surprising. Well, I think it's going to be interesting to see, because, again, we have time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see if people that we haven't heard of jump up to the top and see if maybe people we wouldn't even know about would be in the Elias Cup. That is true. (laughs) And then, for Brooklyn Styles... Like, they're going to keep Thomas Larson because, I mean, he won the USBC Masters. they got to keep him. He's been doing a lot better ever since he switched to Storm. And then B.J. Moore, guy who's been an all-star at the Elias Cup multiple times. Yeah. And then for Solid. the New Solid York board. City Kingpins, uh, Marshall Kent, I mean, the New York, the New York City Kingpins, the only good, good, good bowler on their team, in my opinion, was Pete because Marshall... You know him. He always cracks under pressure. He doesn't perform that well too often. Well, Marshall, he's just been making some bad decisions even lately with how he's playing the lane and how he's using those balls. And right now, Big Bowling only has four balls out. And they're all incredibly powerful. I think Big Bowling's really solid balls, but uh, we talked to our pro shop guy in there, and they're thinking about coming out with some newer balls for for that low end stuff, so I think once he gets those in his arsenal, he might actually start to do better. I can see. That. But I think he's been playing the r- lanes the wrong way. He's been like opening the lane up when he doesn't have to. That's taking away all of your pocket presence. You're leaving stuff to miss right and left, and then it's gonna overhook or it's just gonna slide, 
and that's not what you want. So that's why he he needs to just start focusing on how is he going to play the lanes. Then he'll start doing better. And, I mean, I, we don't have much room to talk. We're not professionals, but... Yeah. From what we, from what I see, like, it's not going well for him, so... Because, like, if you also take a look at his arsenal, because, like, the only TV show he made was the Cheetah Pattern, or the Cheetah Championship. He was his the Shim Wrecker. Yeah, his weakest ball was the Shim Wrecker, and he was at 6.0, hook out of 10. Well, I think he's probably doing a lot with different drillings, though, too. Like, you can do a one-inch pin, two-inch pin, all these different drillings to make the ball do what you want. I have a Rubicon UC2, one of the smoothest balls in my bag. For most people, it's going to be super angular. So, I mean, drilling him drilling his different balls different ways is definitely going to help. I'm just saying, like, you think he would go with something maybe like a drilling... A uh, combination that would be a bit weaker than 6.0. I feel like 6.0 is like because he literally well, had to hook the lane with that thing. Well, the the hook the hook rating comes from the cover stock from what from what people see the core specs and all of that do. Oh, so okay. you, makes your sense. hook potential, your hook rating isn't 100 percent accurate to what the ball's actually gonna look like on the lane. Okay. So, you know, you got some people would have a pitch purple below their pitch blacks and how they're drilled differently it doesn't much matter it's urethane yeah you know it's going to do what it's going to do but when you take a different drilling and use two two different balls you can get one to be weaker than the other without the core dimensions and all of that being actually weaker mm-hmm. so i think he, he, pro- he probably does have a bunch of different drillings for that too and then I think they're going to keep Darren mostly because he's made a lot of TV shows. Kind of like with Chris Vi, he's made a lot of TV shows. He's made He may not have won a lot of them, but he still made them, and that's that takes a lot. Yeah, I also think that Darren is going to have a lot of energy to bring to a team like that. He's going to get him yeah. fired up. He's got dyed hair. That's always uh, That always <laughs> means they're going to be interesting. I just tell you what, you know. Yeah, and pretty, like, at 2019, almost every ball that Darren threw at the 2019 Elias Cup was a strike. He performed pretty well. And in 2020, uh, I don't remember how he performed there. I mean, they lost in the first round, but I'm pretty sure Darren performed pretty well, too. The main reason they lost in 2020 was mostly because Oscu's shots were, I don't even know how to explain them. Not good. <laughs> yeah, and Pete, he was having trouble with corner pins. Because, like, he, he missed on two 10 pins, and it's because he threw his idol, and it just kind of... I think one hooked away, and one went into the gutter, I think. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I watched I just think that that's an error in judgment for for throwing at a spare. I just... I don't know if he's actually gonna, like, does that bad. He's obviously probably learned his lesson. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> um, so I think he's gonna do better than with it. I don't know why he stopped using the Geico ball for spares. Now he just goes with a strike ball for spares. Well, his rev rate's probably decreasing, and he wants to have as many balls as possible in his arsenal. And for him, his he's probably thought, ah, my spare ball isn't, I don't need it as much anymore, you know? Yeah. You, you get that. You switched to throwing urethane at spares. Yeah, I, didn't, I just didn't, because, like, if I wanted to have, like, a regular five-ball arsenal... And I wasn't going to get a six-ball bag, so there was no point in me keeping a plastic ball when I can just learn to throw urethane at my spares. Right. I mean, for me, I, you know, high rev rates got to kind of have that. So, I mean, I tried throwing urethane at spares for a while. It just, it just doesn't work. Yeah. It's like, it's different for everybody. I mean, not everybody's going to be the same. I mean, almost, there's like... I think a majority of the pros like to throw urethane at spares and uh, sometimes throw reactive. Like, I mean, look at blowers like Dick Allen. He'll throw his strongest ball that he has at his spares and hit them. Well, yeah, that's because he's basically throwing a backup ball at it. Exactly. He's just whipping it down there. Like EJ Tackett. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because EJ sometimes will have his uh, sniper and sometimes he won't. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, whatever. He Doesn't he throw the... Uh, one of his tanks at spares normally now. I think it's the tank blitz, maybe. I could be yeah, wrong on that. so he's just whipping it down there. And then for uh, the Brooklyn Styles... Oh, wait, I already mentioned that, but I 
I don't think that they're they. I don't know why Johnny Petraglia kept Brad Angelo. He should have dropped him after 2019. I never found the appeal of Angelo either. He should have kept Andres Gomez, in my opinion, over Brad Angelo. That's just me, though. Yeah, I would say Gomez is a little bit better. He's a well round, more well-rounded player. And then Rhino Page, I mean, he hasn't been doing good ever since he switched to big. I'm not saying it's Big Bowen's fault, but he just hasn't been performing well in general, really. Lately. Doesn't Rhino Page own Big Bowen? Wait, he does? I thought... It- because, like, didn't, wasn't Ryan Simonelli the first one who came up with the idea? Because that's when I first heard of Big was when Ryan Simonelli was doing the giveaway with Jason Belmonte. I'm not sure. Because that, cause that's when I first heard of him. All, I could be wrong, though. All I know about Big is people bowl for them. Mm-hmm. You know, Rhino Page, Marshall Ken. And uh, Pontus Anderson. Okay, I, I'm going to be real with you. I have no idea about that one. But... <laughs> And then they they have a good ball designer back there. He's a previous Storm ball designer. So I was you, just going to say, know, wasn't he from Storm? You know they're going to be good. And that's probably why you got Marshall Kent to switch. Mm-hmm. Because Marshall Kent probably knew who he was from Storm and was like... Well, ah. Uh, and then also Big probably was like, hey, we'll give you a really nice contract. And he's just like, yeah, well, well, I already suck, so... <laughs> Well, yeah, I can probably. use the money. <laughs> the, the, con- the contract might have been the big part because they're a smaller company, which means that they have more interest in the individual player right now to yeah. get their balls out there. You know, we don't have too many big bowling uh, supply in Michigan right now. So if you want a big bowling ball and you live in the southern part of Michigan, go to Mark's Pro Shop at Brighton Bowling Alley. <laughs> Because <laughs> he does have them. I've seen them. Yep. Shout yeah. out to Mark. That's for you, baby. Yeah. All right. Next. Next. <laughs> so, so these are who I think uh, the Brooklyn Styles and Kingpins are going to pick up. Brooklyn Styles. I know this is kind of weird, and you'd probably say, like, uh, the Kingpins would be more likely to draw, uh, to pick him up. But I think the Brooklyn Styles, it's going to be a twist. They're going to pick up Michael Tang. That's what I think, personally. Because I just think... No, it'd be kind of too obvious for the Brook- for the Kingpins to pick up uh, Michael as well. I feel like Brooklyn is going to pick him up instead. Maybe. I don't know. Mm. But that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't know. Because Michael hasn't been making shows, though. He made a sc- he made the Scorpion show, and oh. he came close. Oh, you're right. Um, you know what? I think that they actually um, might take both Darren and, and, and Michael on the same. If the Kingpins drop Darren, that is. Yeah. I doubt they will because he's, like, better. But, better. No, the Kingpins might, might take might take Michael. It could go either way, really. It, it could. Uh, they're not going to drop Darren. Darren's too, too, too good of a player to just be like, nah, you're going away. Just bye. And then the second <laughs> player they're going to pick up, I think, is going to be Jake Peters. Because he's been... He's, he's in there in the rankings. He's in, like, the mid... 30s, I think, in the top 50. And he's been kind of get. He's slowly been getting up there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, here's another thing that I might say would be, are they going to start mixing the teams? Like, are females and males going to be on the same teams now? I want to say, personally, I'm going to say no, because, I mean, why would they make the Miami Waves and Phoenix Fury if... They're not gonna, or if they're gonna still mix teams, I just don't think that makes sense personally. But I could be wrong. I don't well, know. I think I I see the Miami Waves and the and the Phoenix Fury. I saw them as just expansion teams, just to start including females. But I think to just have an entirely female team kind of defeats the purpose of the integration with all of them. Yeah. So like, if you're if you're building the best team then why would you limit that team to only female bowlers or limit the other teams to only male bowlers? You kind of want to have the just straight up the best. That is team. fair. That is fair. So I think I I think that they should. I don't know if they will. They've done it before. I mean, yeah. So that's why I thought it was kind of weird to do all female teams. Like not that there's anything wrong with it. I just thought it was kind of different cuz like you've let them on all male teams before. Right. So why are you making it all female exclusive and all male exclusive again now? Right, that's kind of like defeats the purpose of integration. But you know, it would it would it would still make sense if they did male and female teams separately. It it makes sense. 
And then if they drop Walter, or like if Walter just retires so he doesn't want to play, right. uh, I think the Brooklyn Styles are also going to pick up AJ Chapman. Ooh, that'd be a good one. That would be a solid bowler to replace. Yeah. Because like he per- he got lucky with Motown with all those lucky strikes, and then when he was with Adam Splitters, I mean... Well, I know from experience, if you're if you're getting lucky strikes, other teams are probably gonna be pretty mad. Like if you're just if you're just tripping everything, and they're just like, "What's going on?" It's just. <laughs> I just still can't be believe mad. that Motown lost to the Kingpins that year, cause like with all the luck they had, man, it was it was rough. Get get sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> and then for the Kingpins. Carolyn Doral, uh, Carolyn uh, Doran Ballard always makes the weirdest picks in my opinion. So I just went with two or some really weird picks here. I went with Brandon Novak because he's like in the top twenty. Michael Davidson because he's also in the top twenty, and they're both like Brandon Novak's not really new, but Michael Davidson is. And then Tim Foy Jr. If Pete retires, because Tim Foy Tim Foy Jr. did beat Jason Belmonte at the was it the Masters or the U.S. Open? I think it was the, it was Masters. the Masters. Okay and. Tim Foy wouldn't. I I'm not sure about the other two, but Tim Foy wouldn't surprise me if they if if you know he was picked. Yeah. So. And then, now that we're uh, now that we kind of brought up the female thing, the Miami Waves. I think they're gonna drop uh, Missy Parkin and Liz Culkin, because I get, they're gonna keep Daniel McEwen. She's their she's like the star of the team. Well, yeah. And then I mean, Clara Guerrero, because she's. She's pretty solid. She's the only one who's made like a PW or a PBA TV show other than Danielle. You know what? Since since we're getting that back off of the COVID restrictions, Daria is going to be able to compete also. So Yeah, exactly. That's why I got her here too. Someone's picking her up for yeah. sure because you know, she's obviously one of the best. And then they're also, uh, Miami Waves are also going to keep Dasha, because, I mean, she was one of the only female bowlers to ever bowl a 300 on TV, and she performed really well with the Miami Waves at the first Elias Cup for them. That was pretty, she did pretty it, well. It's going to be interesting to see the, the female strike percentage compared to the males, just because of the lower rev rate, too. <laughs> so that also might be a factor in if they do, you know, let every team pick anybody. That that's also going to be an interesting factor to see if the other teams are going to want to take that. Yeah, for sure. And then the Phoenix Fury, they're going to drop Jordan Richard and Stephanie Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, because they're gonna they got to keep <laughs> yeah. Liz and Shannon O'Keefe because they're both kind of like I want to say Liz is the face of the Fury, but it could be Shannon too. So I kind of I think Liz has just been around a lot longer. And she's been in multiple she's, Elias Cups. Yeah, so I think she's more the face just with how present she is with uh, with the area, you know, there. Yeah, and then they got to they got to keep Maria because she was or uh, Maria Jose Rodriguez. She was like one of the main reasons why they were able to stay for so long because she won a lot of the roll offs for them. She had the most amount of strikes. She was really good. You know, it'll be interesting to see, because I don't know if she if she will be kept. I think they might drop her to pick up Daria, maybe. You think they'll drop three players instead of two? Um, Cause I think it's interesting to see. They, they probably won't, but it'll be interesting to see, because they're still new teams, mm-hmm. so you don't know if they want to start with just having their two top bowlers and then take a fresh from you know, try to pick more to get, you know, going again. Because, like, they usually always have, they have to keep three players. The only time where they didn't keep three was with the Brooklyn Styles, cause sh- but that, was, that wasn't up to Johnny Petraglia. Sean Rash just decided to drop to, out. To drop out, yeah. Yeah, because he was, and he this was is why I can't. scared of the heat. I'm just, yeah, I'm just scared, or not scared, <laughs> this is why I don't like Sean, <laughs> this is why I don't like Sean Rash, is like, if he's, like, because with the Brooklyn Skiles, he basically was just like, this team sucks, we never win anything, so I'm just gonna quit, that's why I feel like he dropped out so he can go to another team that actually has a chance of winning, that's what I like to think, I could be wrong, but honestly, I, there's, there's a lot about him I don't like, I can go on all day about it, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but. Yeah, you, you don't really want to just drop out of a team like that. 
Yeah, because it just makes you look bad, because you're just like... Yeah. It makes... Because, like, all the people are just going to assume, oh, he's just tired of losing with them. That's why he dropped out. But, yeah, but you also might get, like, other teams reluctant to pick him up, because they're like, well, what if we pick him, and then he drops out? Yeah. Like, so, you don't really... That's not a good image to set for yourself. And then, for who the Phoenix Fury are going to pick up, and... Okay, so I'm just going to say it right now. Daria, Pry- uh, Daria Payak is in one of them, but I'll get to that in a minute on why. Uh, the Miami Waves, I think they're going to pick up Elise Bolton and Diana Zavulova, or however that you say that. I Yeah, close enough. Like, <laughs> I don't, I've, don't... I can't even attempt that, so... <laughs> but yeah, I think they're going to get picked up because they're, they've been pretty solid, especially Diana. She's done pretty well over the years, and Elise is getting up there too because I've heard a lot of good things about her on the PWBA Tour. And then for the Phoenix Fury, I think uh, they're going to pick up Jen Higgins and Sherry Tan. Uh, Sherry Tan, for sure. I think she's a solid one, but I'm not sure on the other one there. Because, like, I know Jen Higgins is, like, a rising star because she was, like, she's one of the younger uh, PWBA players who, like, kind of just started out. She's been doing pretty well. Right, but seeing as how she is young, um, maybe... They're going to go with someone who is more experienced on, on that front. I was going to pick Kelly Kulik over her, but considering that she wasn't picked last year, I'm not sure if she even has a chance this year. I don't. I haven't been watching the women's bowling. I haven't really. either. I just look at the stats. I just think Kelly Kulik, I think she's coming back a little bit, so I think she might be picked up. I don't know. Okay. And then for the two miscellaneous teams that are supposed to get, like, I just picked two because, I mean, they added two last year, so that's that might be how much they add again. So you think Daria might be added to one of those? Yeah, for the all, because, like, the way they did the draft last year is that the two new, uh, the Las Vegas High Rollers and the uh, Bruce City Ballers, they got to pick three players right off the bat so they can have their main three that they're going to keep. Oh, so wait, if they if they do have those new expansion teams, maybe they, they would pick up Packy because he's going to be dropped out. Exactly why I added him to the first all-male team. So for the all ah, the team one all-male team, they're going to pick Martin Larson, Packy Hanrahan, and Ildemaro Ruiz because they were in the top two best teams. Right. Ildemaro being from Las Vegas and Martin and Packy being from the Lumberjacks. And then their two other picks after that, I think are going to be Sam Cooley and Jason Sterner. Sam Cooley, for sure. Solid bowler. Not sure about this. Because the Philadelphia Not Hitmen, sure I say that. they're guaranteed going to drop Jason Sterner because there's no way they're going to get Tom rid of Tom Smallwood or Don Barrett. Right. Well, Sterner, I'm just not sure if he's going to be strong enough. Oh, okay, I see. So, like, I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but, you know... It, it's always interesting to see who they pick. They might pick up, again, someone we've never heard of. Yeah. They might just be like, we're, we're taking a chance here, and we're going with this person. Mm-hmm. They might like their attitude, or they might like how they bowl, and they'll be like, well, we can fit this in to what we need. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, seeing as how they are a new team, they might just be like, We'll we'll try it. <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. Like we're not they're not you're not really gonna expect to win your first year. Yeah. So they might just try to build a base and see like. That's you know. what that's why I was rooting for the Las Vegas High Rollers because they were the underdogs and I was like oh my god they got a pretty like all star team they're gonna do well and they did they came pretty close to beating the Lumberjacks. Yes, they did, and it would be interesting to see. How how they go this year? Because this yeah. year they're going to be even stronger. And then for the all female team, their main three picks for the people they're going to pick, they're going to pick Jordan Richard, Stephanie Johnson, and Daria Payak. Was was Francois Lavoie? He was on LAX, right? No, he was on the High Rollers. He was oh, their he was star on the player. High Rollers. Okay, so he's definitely going to keep keep him. Yeah, and whatever team he's on, you know they're going to the have a good rollers. chance. There, you know, he's been bowling super good. He's got great form. His timing's almost perfect. He's he's doing really well right now, and you know, yeah. he's gonna bring a lot of energy to it. You know, even though he's got like even though he's some super of the quiet, least energy. yeah. 
<laughs> it's like the least energy person can even the least energy can bring energy to a team though. Like exactly. If you got them striking all over the place, like you 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 you, you can imagine that they're gonna you know. I was just kind of surprised with how he performed at the Elias Cup in 2020. He was just it seemed like he was really off compared to how he usually is. Because like a lot of his he was the he had like the least amount of strikes out of everybody there. Because I like watched each match. He was the one who struck the least. And he was, like, the main reason why they lost to the Lumberjacks because he left a lot of nasty splits. Yeah, and I think that's probably not going to happen this year. I don't think so right. either. Well, next year, but... I just think maybe he got into his head a little bit, maybe, in the finals because, like, they were kind of under pressure because they were like, we're the new team. We're going up against the previous champions. We got to win this. Um, I'm not sure if it is that, but that probably did play a role in it. I think they were just trying to go all out and then it backfired and they they went too 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 aggressive with it and like sometimes it's better to just find your pocket shot and leave some 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 spares but like leave makeable stuff yeah that's kind of like how that's what i kind of feel like happened to ildamaru richie and uh aj johnson because they were kind of like instead of like focusing more on bowling they were focusing on like yelling and, and like kind of acting out like you know Richie T's every time he got a strike he was like <sighs> like that and I was just like maybe focus on throwing more strikes because like I mean you threw most of them but maybe just not do that every single time focus more on the bowling instead of being the showman well I think oh. like I mean it's not a bad thing but I'm just saying like if you guys really want to win this you guys kind of kind of you got to keep your heads in the game so I think with a crowd you know, next year, if, they, if there's a crowd, you know, there, it's going to probably take a, alleviate some of that showmanship off of the bowlers and put yeah. it back onto the crowd. Because, like, in years past, you didn't have them, like... Showing off. Showing off. You had them, like, excited, but they weren't doing everything to keep it lively as, like, now. Like, I bowl... When I bowled my high school tournaments this year... It was really weird because there are no, no spectators, no one to keep it going. So it was basically you and your team. That's it. Mm-hmm. You, they were your cheerleaders. So yeah. I think that's going to be something that will play into it. Crowds always make it more interesting. And then for the two picks that uh, the all-female team would pick up, I think are going to be Gigi Mason and Verity Crawley. I cannot argue with those picks. Those are very solid picks. Um, you know, they're both strong bowlers. They're both probably going to strike a lot. And, uh, you know. That's why I'm really surprised that bowlers. Jasmine Mason wasn't picked up, like, by the Miami Waves or the Phoenix Fury at first. Because she she's been a really strong bowler since she started. Well, yeah, she started, what, 2018, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you got... Still young, though, so Fair. maybe they were, like, yeah, not enough experience yet. Where When they, they picked a lot of bowlers with, like, a ton of experience on tour. So you can see why they might not have. Probably should have turned that off from the beginning, but now it's starting to get a little bit darker. Sorry, keep going. Oh, I'm, I'm done. I'm, oh. I lost my thoughts now. <laughs> I, it's, I just saw you reach across, and you're like... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just like I noticed it was getting darker and darker, and I was like, okay, maybe I should do something about that. And the fade is occurring. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Gigi Mason will be like a really big pick for the female teams, and so will Verity Crawley. Verity Crawley should have been picked because she's had a lot of experience. Let's see, uh, Philadelphia Hitman team that. They've come close, like, maybe once or twice, but they've been pretty poor. They've been doing pretty poorly lately. Uh, keeping Tom Smallwood, Don Barrett, and Sean Maldonado, which kind of gives me the question. I thought that, uh, uh, who's their manager again? Uh, Jason Couch. Mm-hmm. He hates two-handers. Why would he keep Sean Maldonado? I thought he hated two-handers. Because Sean uses his thumb. He's not like the other two-handers. Well, he doesn't anymore, I, I know he doesn't anymore. It was a joke. Oh. Uh, but it's like... I was going to be like, but no, wait. It's like... And also, Maldonado isn't even my first pick for, for, for... 
he's not even like top 10 two-handers for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't get around his form like he hops at the end. Yeah. Like, you don't want to do that. He was the worst at the uh, um, the speeding or the strike challenge where you had to throw as many strikes as possible. What, he threw one? Yeah, he was the worst at that, though, because the hop was really holding him back. Yeah, probably, you know, he's he's complained about his knee and his hip before, and the hop definitely is not helping it because you're putting all of that pressure on that one leg and condensing it into that one part of your body, and you're not, not good. Yeah. And it's then, also probably Kyle Sherman's problem a little bit, putting all of his weight on one leg. He had to get hip surgery. I know, I So thought. that's like, that's... You probably got to change something if you had to get hip surgery and you're not even, like, 30 yet. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> My knees. Oh, no. Oh, God. Has three knee replacement surgeries by the time I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Philadelphia Hitmen, they're definitely going to drop Matt Ogle and Jason Sterner because they didn't really contribute anything to the team to my memory i don't even know what matt ogle is doing right now like to be honest with you i haven't seen him do anything he's just kind of bowling in tournaments wherever he's he, not making an impression he somehow made the doubles tournament with sean rash this year i don't know how well they do it like every year yeah which is why yeah like they shouldn't and according according to the announcers, Matt Ogle has like two or three jobs when he's not bowling. He's making a lot of money doing what he does. He does, I think he does. If I remember correctly, he does like concrete and stuff like that in the summer. Winter, he does snow plowing yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff, and then he does yeah. something owns else. His, in the fall. He owns his own company. Yeah, he yeah. Does, he does make uh, lead leaf blowing in the fall. And it's like, why Take would care of the leaf is this? If you own your own company, you've got to be making a, at least a decent amount of money. I get that being a pro bowler would probably contribute to that, but I mean, if you're not doing that well, just focus on your day job. Yeah, but like for for professional bowlers, you don't want to just quit. That is like, fair. I mean, bowling tournaments is so much fun, though. Like fair. You're you're, you're and and you're gonna be making money for just going and playing a game. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? That is true. That, like, he owns his own company. He can just take time off to go bowl. So, that's what I would do. Fair. I don't even know why I said anything in the first place then, because I kind of just realized, yeah, if he's the owner, he can just take his own time off. Yeah. So I was just thinking, like, yeah. if you own your own company, <laughs> like, why would you want to... But anyways, but yeah, they're definitely going to drop him, because he didn't, he didn't make any impressions. Um, but... I feel like this is going to be a guaranteed pickup. Bruce City Ballers are going to pick Matt Ogle up because of his relationship with Sean Rash. I think he's going to be their first pick. You know, I don't know if that's true, actually. Because, like, Matt Ogle still isn't the strongest bowler. They've got more strong bowlers ahead of him. That's Just because fair. one bowler has a relationship with another one doesn't mean that that's going to be your best option. Because that's kind of how I feel like the Bruce City Ballers were picked, though, because if you look at the chemistry between the players, they picked Dick Allen, and then they picked Zeke Bate. Those two were doubles partners, and they had great chemistry together, and they almost won the whole thing together. And then Sean Rash, Ryan Simonelli, my hero, and my least, or the only bowler that I don't like. My hero and my enemy. Oh no, what do I do? (laughs) But yeah, they've been doubles partners in the past before Sean ended up picking up Matt Ogle as his doubles partner instead. I don't even know what the hell that was, but... It was something that went ding. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, they kind of, I feel like uh, Marshall Holman kind of went off of chemistry, who has chemistry with each other, who can perform well, but also has, like, good chemistry with each other. So that's why he picked Sean Rash, Ryan Simonelli together, because... They had chemistry. Dick Allen, Zeke Bate, chemistry. And then Chris Sloan, up-and-comer, but him and Sean Rash bowl for 900 Global, so they kind of know what they're know what each one is throwing and stuff like that. Well, it's not necessarily knowing what each one is throwing. It's how they use the, those to their advantage. Like, if they're playing the same lines, then you got, you know, 
a lot yeah. better idea. Like something that's strange in in the professional tour, you you're not seeing teams throw the same lines. In college, you see teams throwing the same line all the time mm-hmm. to burn up lines and stuff. But professionals, and I think it's just on TV because you're trying to get you know the best thing you can. But you know it, it's interesting to see how it how they would do it in the qualifying rounds because mm-hmm. I haven't seen that either. I haven't seen them do that. So I think it's cool to, to watch before they get to the show because you don't see that. Like, you know, I was watching individual tournaments for their qualifying and they're lofting the gutter. When do you ever see that on TV? Pretty much Simonson never. did it. Simonson did it one time. Yeah. You know, you're not going to see that. And then the reason he doesn't do that anymore on TV is because he has the backup ball now. So if he really had to, well, like, loft the gutter, he would probably rather throw the backup ball because he won an entire tournament just throwing a backup ball. No, he's. it, it depends on the day, though. Because oh. if you're throwing a backup ball and you're still seeing that transition, you don't want to really move super deep with a backup ball. So mm. then, in that case, you're going to loft the gutter. Okay. It's probably the best case scenario. Like, uh... I know when I have to, I'll throw a backup ball, but I go to lofting the gutter first before a backup ball. So I would imagine it's the same for him. That makes sense. Probably more comfortable to just throw it normally, you know. And then for uh, the second pick for the Bruce City Ballers, it's going to be Kyle Sherman. That's what I'm predicting. Because, I mean, they're going to have one of the... The Bruce City Ballers, I'm pretty sure they came in third place because they lost to the Lumberjacks and still pulled, uh, pulled some pretty good scores. Yeah. So I think that they're going to pick Kyle Sherman because he's, he's, gra- he's not too great. He's not really in the middle either. He's kind of bottom of the barrel now at this point. Well, yeah, I still think he's a good bowler, though. So I think that, you know, just based off of recognition, they, they, could, they would pick him. Still be a good choice. Still do, do good with him. All right. He's probably not going to bring down the team. He might not help the team a lot, but he's not going to bring them down. Yeah. And then I already said who the Philadelphia Hitmen are going to drop. All right, so who the Philadelphia pit or Hitmen are going to pick up. And now I, are, I know we already talked about, like, Young Guns and stuff before, and I know you already said that, but I, I like, wrote this before we talked. <laughs> I feel like since he already he made the show – and he also got to compete for the U.S. Open. I feel like the Philadelphia Hitman might pick up Spencer Robarge. That's what I was going with at first. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, I was like, hey, Jason Couch is a lefty. And he generally likes to, he's never had a lefty on his team before. And I feel like Spencer Robarge would be a good, like, idea to get for, like, a first-time lefty on the Philadelphia Hitman. For well, sure. they've had, actually, the Philadelphia Hitman have had a lefty before. But that was before, like, the whole format of the Elias Cup Ryan changed. Seminole. Yeah, he was on the... Uh, Philadelphia Hitman for I think the first two or three years of the PBA League and then he switched over to the Brooklyn Styles and then and now it's just that now Bro, Ooh, now he's at yeah. Brew City alrighty then there's <laughs> that but yeah Spencer Robarge and I think he's also going to pick up or the Hitmen are going to pick up Brad Miller oh yeah Ooh, it'll be interesting to see if a team picks up both Brad and Kyle because that would be cool because Chemistry, yes, they have chemistry. They're best friends. That might that sounds like something that Bru- that sounds like something that Bruce City would do. They would pick up Brad and Kyle instead of Matt Ogle. Uh, hey, you know they might actually. You know, I think Brad and Kyle together might will probably be better than Matt Ogle. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, that's what I would say. But the only thing that can kind of contradict that is because Kyle Sherman and Brad Miller went up against Sean Rash and Matt Ogle in the 2019 doubles tournament and they lost. That's the only thing I could say that could contradict it, but that's really it. Yeah, but I, I if you're just going off of chemistry. Well, I still think <laughs> that Brad and Kyle are better. That is, I mean, yeah, I I'm mean, still Matt Ogle. gonna say it. <laughs> yeah, Brad and Kyle are in the top fifty, and Matt Ogle isn't. So, mm-hmm. well, he could be. I could be wrong. I don't know. Alrighty then. We didn't talk about LAX yet, did we? Uh, we talked a little bit about the. Well, that was like the first thing we brought up is you thought they were gonna win. I said they were gonna drop Anthony Lavery Spar and Patrick Gerard, and I think they're gonna pick up Richie Teese and Chris Kelso. Okay, that's yeah. Then we did talk about that. 
Now, here's another one that I'm excited to talk about. Silver Lake Adam Splitters. I'm, I don't want to see them win, but they've got... I want to see them come in third. <laughs> they've got some big decisions to make because Chris Fye won a major. He's bowling a lot better now. He made four of the five majors, if I remember correctly. Four of the five. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Chris Vye is going to freaking slap. He's going to clap some cheeks. So, I feel like Tom Baker, he's... I don't know why he's kept Chris Barnes for this long. I mean, sure, he was the MVP in 2018, but you see how he performed in 2019 and 2020. He sucked. Well, he's trying to play the lane differently. Don't yeah. Do that. Yeah, play exactly. Strader is greater. That's what he's always gone by, and then when he goes to hook the lane, he sucks completely. Strader is greater until, until... Until you start hooking the lane, and it's just like... Yeah, you lost to Jason Belmonte because you, you threw a strike have, with a ringing. Have you ever you have you ever ten. seen Chris Barnes try to loft a gutter? No, dude, he pretty much just fades the pocket. He <laughs> it doesn't even hook back in. I know it's awful. It's, yeah, dude. Looks like he's shooting for a ten pin. <laughs> dude, that he lost. Uh, because like he competes on the PBA fifty two two. He right. not only lost, he lost like three or four times in qualifying and still made like the final step ladder. Oh, yeah. Where he got destroyed. He lost to Michael Haugen Jr. He lost to Pete Weber. He lost to some other guy that I can't remember the name of. And then I think he also lost to, uh, lost to Ryan Schaefer. And then he goes on to the step letter and gets defeated by the same guy that I can't remember the name of. And then he goes on to fight or bowl against Michael Haugen. And then Michael Haugen Jr. wins. Yes. And I'm like... I feel like Chris Barnes should just retire at this point. He's just getting worse and worse as the years go on. He's just going to continue to compete in the PBA 50, maybe a few PBA tournaments here and there. and You know, he might he might come back. He might. Because, like, Pete and Walter, like, they're older than him, and they're doing better than him. And they're retired now from the PBA. Yes. Because, like, I mean, Pete beat him in the first ever PBA 50 tournament. Not just the first ever, the first one of the year. First one of the year, that's what I meant. <laughs> but <laughs> first ever was quite a while ago, but <laughs> Yeah. I'm pretty sure Pete, like, he wasn't even fifty when the first ever one started, I'm assuming, but if I, Pete was I, there and Chris was there. I actually do don't know. Well the PBA wasn't as big back then. You know. I think what probably would have been in his forties. Maybe. Thirties, forties. Late thirties, early forties is what I had to guess. Couldn't do a Google search, but we're too lazy for that, so. <laughs> and then for Silver Lake Atom Splitters, they're going to drop, I'm, this has got to be a guarantee, because they're going to drop Chris Barnes. They have to, come on. Like, Tom, stop, like. They're not going to. Just like, come on, man. Dr I get that Chris Barnes is, other than Jesper and Tom, he's technically the face of the team, but come on, man. You see how he's performed in the past, like, two years. He's He's terrible. He couldn't. Th he couldn't strike. He didn't strike at all in 2020. I'm pretty sure he didn't strike at all. So here's what I'm gonna say. They're gonna keep for the Adam splitters. I'm gonna say yes for Spence and Chris Vi and Doherty. That's what I said on here. You're just reading what I wrote. <laughs> I am reading that, but I do. I do think. I do think that that's solid. Or, I would say switch out Tom Doherty for Chris Barnes. The thing is, though... because no, because of the presence of Chris Barnes. Oh, okay. I think, but... There's no way, though, because, like, Tom Doherty, he won a major. Why would you drop a guy who just won a major? Why would you want to drop him? Chris Barnes also has majors, but... Yeah, but he <laughs> hasn't won anything in since 2017? Fair enough. Um, <laughs> can't argue with that. He's just reading what I said. Yeah, yeah, because I'm not prepared, okay? <laughs> But I, those are good <laughs> bowlers. Like, you're not going to tell me I'm wrong. I know, I'm not. I'm just saying because, like, you were just reading exactly what Well, I'm no. I, I like Chris Vi. I wanted Chris Vi to be on the Lumberjacks last year. I did, You too, know personally. that. Yeah. Because when we were drafting our teams, I said Chris Vi on mine. I said Chris Vi, Packy Handerhan was my two. They got Packy. I was like, Chris Vi's gone, but oh well. Mm -hmm. Life moves on. <laughs> um... But now Chris Vi's going to be uh, a dominant player in the future. For yeah, sure. they got to. He's got to. Tom Baker. If he doesn't keep Chris Vi, then something's wrong with him. Chris Vi, uh, going to be uh, hot takes of the year. Going to be uh, better than um, Anthony Simonson. Ooh, I can see that. I mean, Anthony's just had more time in the PBA, though. Too, mm -hmm. So I don't know. 
Yeah, and then they're definitely going to drop AJ Chapman because, I mean... What has he done? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I don't... <laughs> and then who I think the Adam Splitters are going to pick up, since they're, they were the worst male team, so they get the first pick. I think their first pick is going to be Christian Ascona. Oh, that's solid. He's a pretty he's a pretty prominent player. And then after that, these two could actually be interchangeable. I think they'll pick either one of them first. But their second pick, I put Zach Weidman. Weidman. They say Weidman on TV. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a Weidman. Oh. Huh. Oh, well. <laughs> like, I'm probably wrong, but I'm pretty sure, like... But yeah, they're both really solid players, and if you guys get the first pick, got to pick someone good. Got to pick someone who's oh, yeah. like at least in the top ten best bowlers who isn't on a team already. You gotta, you gotta go with your guns, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta come out swinging. Yeah. Big guy. Top ten, top twenty. All right. And then let's see who haven't we discussed yet? Dallas Strikers. All right. I already said they're gonna drop Brad Miller. Uh, they're also gonna drop Nick Pate because I mean. Duke, O'Neal, and Jones, they're like a three-man team, basically. Like, they're, they've done well together for a long time. They won 2016 and 2017 back-to-back. -back. Now the question is, who do they pick up? Who I think they're going to pick up? They kind of get in, they're kind of like, in, they're in the top four, so they're not going to get the best picks, but they're not going to be terrible. You're saying Ronnie Russell? Yeah, because like, he made, he made a TV show for technically a major but because they're for number they're number four so they're not going to have the best picks so ronnie russell's not terrible but he's not good either he's not like out of the realm of possibilities and then after that michael holloman all right that one's pretty good you know i don't know about ronnie russell but michael mike good pretty good I'm just surprised that he hasn't been improving since like twenty twenty or twenty nineteen. Well, you know, you're gonna hit walls. Fair. Yeah. So let's see. And then the only team we haven't we talked about a little bit but haven't entirely was the Las Vegas High Rollers. Uh dropping Richie Cheese and Ildemaro. I feel like it would be cool if they kept Ildemaro because he had a majority of the strikes. But I mean, how can you drop AJ Francois and Andrew Anderson? When they're like the dynamic trio, the threatening trio, or the, whatever you know the, what I mean. The dynamic duo, but with an extra person. And <laughs> yeah, Richie Tish was really good too. There was nothing wrong with really any of them, but you had to drop them. You had to drop the two three people. Musketeers, so. as you. Did. Yeah. I'm still stuck on the three thing. <laughs> Like kind of stop paying attention, but I get it. <laughs> I, I I I think I picked up the majority. I think. It's and since Las Vegas was second place, they're going to get two of, like, the really low picks. So I'm saying they're going to pick up Sean Lavery Spar because he's way better than Anthony, in my opinion. Because, I mean, he picked up the eight or the 9-7 split on TV. That's almost impossible to pick up. Everything's impossible if you, if you try hard enough. Fair. Fair. <laughs> I mean, but, yeah, it's, like, one step away from the 7-10. So if he's able to pick up a 9-7, I'm pretty sure he could pick up a 7-10, too, if he really went for it. Or if he ever left it. And then the second pick, Mitch Hoopé. I oh. know that's kind of low, but oh. I feel like Hoop, I feel like they would pick some newer or more experienced people that get dropped and then pick Hoopé. You know what? I like Mitch Hoopé, but he has not been impressing me lately. Just not doing great. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to see all the younger people being like up there, but... I like, I would, it would be just awesome if I saw, like, the top five new people that I want to see, Spencer Robarge, 100%, uh, Anthony Nyer, Chris Kelso, Zach Weedman, Weidman, whatever, and then, Zach W. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, he's not really, well, Kevin Williams, he's not entirely new because he's been around since, like, 2017. Close enough. You know what? No, I'm gonna pick. Uh, I don't. I don't know why I wasn't thinking of Wesley Lowe, but I didn't have him in the draft at all. But Wesley Lowe, I'd like to see him. But I feel like I. I don't know. You didn't, th you didn't think of it till I mentioned it. Yeah. Because <laughs> he was. Because I was just looking down the list of the rankings and stuff, and he wasn't that high, on there. 
course not. So that's why I didn't see him, so I wasn't thinking of him immediately. Well, yeah, but any guy who can have a 900... It's Come true. on. <laughs> like, Honestly, if I had to make one change to this, I'd probably take off... Uh, say screw Ronnie Russell and put in Wesley Lowe there for Dallas Strikers, just because, like, the only... Oh, yeah. Whoa. Like, the only one who... I feel like doesn't deserve to be on here is Ronnie Russell. I think I'm about. <laughs> I think the strikers actually might drop somebody. Well, like one of the ones that they do drop, I think that that would Nick Payton, Brad Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna drop those. I'm not sure if they're gonna pick up. I mean, ah, what what am I saying, dude? Well, uh, I, I, I think another muscle. So Motown, right? Yeah. You got them, and with them with EJ Tackett, obviously. You're gonna want another motive bowler on there, so they're gonna like they're looking at Wesley Lowe probably, and I think that just being from Michigan with the relation to motive, that's my correlation. Wesley Lowe's from Michigan. No, oh, I, I was mi- gonna say mo- was motive like, is in Muskegon though. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just thinking motive in relation with Michigan. Wait, isn't Wesley Lowe from like? It doesn't matter. Um. <laughs> <laughs> he bowls in Arizona, so I mean, hey. I'm Wait, isn't he from California, though? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then why did you ask if he was from Michigan? No, because I was like, because I thought you said, I thought that's what you were trying to get at, and no. I was just like, wait. <laughs> no, no, what? No, um, no, he's gonna go. I want, I want to say Motown. But if you went to Dallas Strikers, I would not be surprised. So. He's gonna get picked up though. <laughs> yeah, that that that's for sure. Well, I don't know why I didn't include him because I, I I just wasn't thinking about him it at is. the time. But yeah, that's the only change I would make. Other than that, I feel like I've got a lot of stuff pretty close, or some of them even spot on. I don't know. What would you? Uh, so LAX, who do you think are gonna be the most likely to get picked up by LAX since they're the team that you want to win? Jason Belmonte. <laughs> I, I don't know. Actually, I take that back. Wesley Lowe might go to LAX. Okay, and then because, who else? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Packy. I want Packy to go there. That would be pretty neat. That'd be pretty. Good. That'd be, yeah, that'd be pretty neat. Chris Vi obviously can't because he's already locked in a team. So if they don't keep him locked in and they drop him, then Tom Baker's. He's stupid. He's stupid. He's stupid. <laughs> Come on. Get in the game. If the female teams and male teams are uh, mixed, I, I would like to see Daria go to LAX. Possibly. Because hmm. that would be interesting. All right. See. If I had to pick... Okay, so what if there was going to be one team that was just all mixed... I'll give mine, you give yours. Okay, you go first. If you just had to make up your own mixed team from tr- players that aren't locked in yet. That aren't locked in? Yeah. So, like, you can't include Belmo, Shoot. you can't include uh, Botroff and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could just pick. Mm-hmm. Anthony uh, Nyer. Okay. I'd like to see Daria, obviously, you're going to take. Oh, ooh. And then the rest are kind of fuzzy, but I want to say Packy because, mm-hmm. you know. Wesley would be a good one. Picking a lot of two handers. It's like. <laughs> well, I mean, you picked Anthony and Daria, so I mean, that's two one handers, two two handers. Yeah, and then I'm gonna say, I want to say Kyle, because I think Kyle could do better. Kyle Sherman. Yes. Okay. Who who's who else is Kyle? Kyle Troop. Even though he's already he's locked already in. He's already locked in. I'm saying, like, you know... There's okay, also fair, another fair. There's also another Kyle Bowler, I think. I yeah, well, fair enough. Kyle Hoopé. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just, just Mitch Hoopé, but with an afro. <laughs> yeah. Just, yes. Uh, Some, somebody make a face, face mash of that, dude. <laughs> yes, I, I would pay money for that. <laughs> How much? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. Too much fun. Um <laughs> Are you okay? No. Are you good? I'm not gonna be okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. 
um, my uh, dream team for just like just anybody who isn't locked in. I would like to have. Let's see, looking at pretty much every one of my top ten favorite bowlers are all locked into a team. So let's see. Spencer Robarge, Anthony Nyer. I know I'm already doing lefties, but you know what? Screw it. Uh, Wesley Lowe. So those three. And then Zach W. <laughs> I'm not going to say it anymore. <laughs> I can't. I, it's like, I can't take it anymore. It's such a simple name, but it's, the vowels are weird. <laughs> and then, like, oh yeah, I forgot. It's a mixed team, so... Jasmine Mason, because I feel like she should have been drafted before. Is it just me, or every time you see her name, you just want to say Gasmine? Because it's spelled with a G. That's why I like it that, that she's going by GG sometimes, because that's just better. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't think of G's and J's, and I don't know why. And if you do, what's the point in the alphabet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Just makes a tangent of why C's and K's need to go away. C can just go away because it's the K and the S. It's just stealing different sounds. <laughs> Think about it. Okay, and then let's do. Let's make up two more of our own teams. Actually, three. An all uh one all male team with any player you want, and then an all female team with any player you want, and then uh if you can like. Just a team. If you could take any bowler from any part of history and have them on a team, oh, shoot. so I'll have you ha have those three. And it doesn't. They don't have to. Like if they're even locked if they're in locked in, it. just oh, shoot, go ahead. Dude. Yeah. For a male team, mm -hmm. I'm just allowed to pick anybody from history. Mm. Or no, no, just for the male oh, team, anybody okay. who's bowling now. All right. We'll save the uh, right. older bowlers and stuff like that for like anybody All from right. history. All right. I'm taking Kyle Troop. Okay. Yeah. Taking. EJ Tech at socks. Don't, oh. <laughs> don't, I gotcha. Um, <laughs> just trying to think. Like, Jason Belmonte's good, but he's not that good. Yeah, not anymore, at least. You know, I take Anthony Simonson, probably. Even though he has an attitude problem. Yeah, now. I'm taking Wes Malott, big nasty. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, and then I'll take Chris Prather, and then I'll take Vacky Hammerhead, so I can have the Lumberjacks plus <laughs> minus one, and then add one again. Yes. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, so, <laughs> so basically just have the Portland Lumberjacks, but instead of Martin Larson, you'll have uh, Anthony, Simonson. Anthony Simonson. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be we take out good Anthony team. Simonson, we put in Anthony Nor Nyer. Put in Anthony Nyer. Then you got a solid team. That's I, pretty good. Or Wesley Lowe. I'm going to take Nyer, though. Okay. I think. I, I think that'll be good. So we got... What do we have? Chris Prather, Chris Prather Wes Mallott, Wes, Packy, uh, Kyle, Kyle True, and then Anthony, Anthony Nair. Nair. Yep, okay. there you go. And there now you... for the female team. Oh, I'm going again? Mm-hmm, yeah. Dude, I don't want female bowlers. Do it, though. Okay. <laughs> Daria, because okay. of course. Uh, Danielle McEwen, because mm -hmm. of course. Liz Johnson, even though I don't like her that much. I don't... Don't ask questions. I'm, I'm just, not, I'm not going to ask. I, I just <laughs> don't like her attitude for some reason. Shannon O'Keefe. Okay, okay. <laughs> don't ask questions about it. I'm not. Okay. Um, <laughs> sounds really shady. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Yeah. There's only one. Pontus Anderson, even though he's not a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Hupe, he has long enough hair. He has long enough hair. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at it. Hmm. I got a few that I want. would, would want to say could do it. Trying to think. That's what I was thinking. Just saying, that's, she's like the best of. She's like gotta be in the top ten best well, female yeah, bowlers. Well, yeah, but you also have Guerrero. Oh yeah, that is true. I'm gonna take Guerrero. Okay. And then any bowler from history. Yeah. No, you yeah you go with that one too, and then I'll do my three. Okay. Um, any bowler from history. Marshall. 
good. Because okay. like, who's not gonna pick him? Yeah. Um. I still like Kyle Troop. He's solid. This is gonna be boring because it's gonna be modern bowlers. Um. I think Norm Duke. Because I like Norm Duke. He's got some style. He's got some pizzazz. Just like um. Two modern bowlers just to be done with it. <laughs> just go like, all right, who who's other two? Uh, mm, I can't even think. Chris Prather. Okay. And f- freaking, uh, you know, Packy. <laughs> not picking Packy this time. You can't trick me now. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> um. Gonna look at the list just to pick. <laughs> just gonna <laughs> pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my face. Um, <laughs> picks Michael Haugen you, Jr. and starts singing you, Dahu Dores. You actually pay, should put it in shit. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I really don't like. <laughs> I I'm aware. <laughs> I've I've known you for a little while, man. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> Uh, Wait, are we taking these players at their prime? If you want to, sure. I said okay, I mean, Anthony I or um Jason Belmonte. Okay. Oh, like when he was good though. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Respect. When he was getting bored, making me bored by winning every single major known to human being. Yeah, that was pretty much up until this year. Now he's just like, eh, I have a family. <laughs> I have another child now. I have a congratulations. Family. By the way, Belmont, I highly doubt you're ever going to watch this, but congratulations. Yeah, unless I, like, DM you on Instagram or something. I'd be like, yo, watch this. But you're not going to, so it doesn't matter. All right, so all-male team, any player. Okay, Ryan Simonelli, he's going to be the anchor. Duh. And then Jesper Svensson, uh, Jason Belmonte, EJ Tackett. Why? It's because, man, it's EJ Tackett, and he'll be the only motive bowler on the team. And then, uh, Norm Duke. And then, I'm gonna have five more players on the team, but they're all sitting on the bench, and they're all gonna sub in. Okay, uh... I don't think you can do that. I know, I know. If I was to make another team, though, could, like, these are just all my top ten favorite bowlers, um... Uh, Pete Weber, Wes Malott, Kyle Troop, uh, Bill O'Neill, and Jacob Potroff. Yeah, all solid bowlers. Um, females! Alright, female bowlers... Daria Payak, 100%. Daniel of course. McEwen. Of course. Um, Gigi Mason, because I feel like she has a lot of potential and a lot of talent, so she should be, definitely. Clara Guerrero. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, that's a really tough one, but I'm going to go with Dasha Kovalova. Or K. Dasha K. Sure, let's just go with that. Because I, I don't want to butcher her last name. Yeah, Dasha's got a lot of potential, too. She's a really good bowler. Yeah. I also don't know. <laughs> She's. I like to consider a power player too, because she doesn't. She throws it really hard, and it hits the pocket hard. Because like she's got a lot of. Uh, but it's down and in. I mean, not a power player. It's a speed. Player. She gets a. She's got messengers and a lot of trip pins before. That's what happens when you throw the ball hard? Have you have you met Megan? Do you remember Megan? Who? Megan. I don't know who that is. From our female bowling team. No. <laughs> she just threw it hard. And it was dumb. <laughs> But, Megan, I, I'm, I'm throwing shade your way if you're watching, which you're not. <laughs> throwing shade at you, dude. And then for bowlers, just throughout history, come on, I think you know who I'm going to pick for just any bowler in history. Just take a guess. No, I already picked him once. I don't want to pick him again. I would, but I'm um, trying to go with just... Marshall Holman. He's one of them. That's one, but... Oh, why is... do I have to pick more? No, don't pick him. Just try and guess him, like... No. Come I, on, I he mean, was, like, like, one of the... He was, like, one of, if not... Or, he was, like, the best lefty on Guppy. tour. Oh, yeah, I never thought about Guppy True, but yes. Gu- yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, I have to keep guessing? Mark. Okay, so I'm just going to give four Martin of the five. Martin No. <laughs> um, Mark Roth, Marshall Holman, Guppy Troop... Uh oh god, what was he was really good back in the day and he retired years ago. Back in my day. <laughs> mm. 
Oh, but come on, you gotta guess him, dude. He was one of the. He was like the best on tour at the time. He was better than Pete. He was better than, like, well, he wasn't bowling when Belmo was around, but still. Earl Anthony. Oh, shoot. How you did know? you forget about Earl Anthony? Because I'm dumb. My brain is filled with school knowledge. <laughs> oh, and the fifth player, Dick Weber. Dick Weber, 100%. Dick. <laughs> One of the best bowlers of all time. You can't forget about Dick. Nobody dude, can. Dude, I think that's why Pete Weber, that's that, That's probably why he wasn't, wasn't suspended indefinitely. It's because his dad is Dick Weber. Dude, Dick Weber was on um the... Keep saying uh, his last name. Just say Dick. <laughs> the <Say> Richie. <laughs> the David Letterman show or whatever. Uh, I can't remember the older guy. He basically Jim and Jimmy Fallon basically does what he does now. I think it was David Letterman. That was his name. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, Dick Weber was on the David Letterman show one time, and he literally got to throw a bowling ball and all kinds of different stuff and destroy things. That was so cool. Gotta watch that. Recommend you guys watching it too. Just look up Dick Weber, David Letterman. Just look, just nah, just look up Dick Weber. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, like, that would be that would be a historical team. Like all, if they were all in their prime, they actually might kick ass even today. Yeah, yes, that that is what historical means <laughs> in in history. No, I know, but I mean, like, yeah. I bet if they were all bowling, like, say if they were all in their prime today in bowling, I'm pretty sure they would all be like the best, even better than Belmo, probably. <laughs> Dude, I would like to say that. Dude, I would, I would, I would that like to see Belmo, but like back in the day, I want to see him place like at the, like the Belmo 80s. at ten years old versus 80s. Dick Weber in his prime. So you would win. No, nah, no. Nah, when like when uh, Belmo was bowling, like I want to see him like now, but like in the nineties and go up against other like big people oh dude time. his ball would probably go high like every single shot he might actually be able to he might not, like even if he would to loft the gutter he'd probably just have his ball just go right into the left gutter mm, no i don't know about that because well, he's you're, you're gonna be throwing rubber you gotta keep but what if you never said that though what if he were to just bring his own reactive stuff like what if he were to bring no, the no, trend no, no. and just use like, that no 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 i'm saying if he were bowling in the eighties, oh, like if he were from, okay, okay. if he were from the eighties, okay, and all he right, had no, like that. just the equipment they had, that would be interesting. That would be yes, because you're throwing rubber and plastic and urethane, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> he had, he just somehow brings the trend back in time with him, and then he bowls against Earl Anthony. He would lose immediately. There's no way he would win. Because like he you would don't know. I mean, he would probably have to loft it from two lanes over or something like that because the trend is, like, because no. I don't think they used, like, the oil they... Well, I'm pretty sure they, they don't. didn't. Yeah. They didn't. No, so because you don't have the advancement in technology. So yeah, they like didn't have... They didn't have reactive back... Or they didn't have reactive until the 90s, so pretty much if you had reactive back then, it would probably overhook almost no, immediately. I'm pretty sure the first reactive was, like, 89. No. Okay. Um. Well, that's that's it for this bowling talk today. We talked about a lot of interesting stuff. So my prediction, I want it to be LAX or Motown Muscle, but I don't know. It's probably going to be like Las Vegas High Rollers or someone who actually gets some good picks in 2022. I, I choose LAX, and I am wrong. So, <laughs> you know, I, well, I, I guess right last year. So maybe I'll be right again. Who knows? I really hope you do, because I actually do want LAX to win. <laughs> I want Belmo. I want Belmo to not win, but also like. I want in... Belmo and Buttrip <laughs> to finally have their first Elias Cup victory. I mean, granted, yeah. LAX should have won years Isn't ago. Isn't that but... like the only thing Belmo hasn't won at this point? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Once he does that, he'll just be the best in history. That's it. That's all she wrote. So after that, if. I would laugh if LAX were to win, and you'd just be like, well, I've won everything now. I retired. Bye. Bye, guys. See you later. Is there any I'll, just to... work. I'll just work at the Storm headquarters. It's all good. I'll buy, like, 50% of Storm. Isn't he, like, an, the international uh, branch? Like, doesn't he do Storm stuff over in uh, Orange? I thought he did. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. Oh, well. Who cares? No one. You don't live in Australia, probably. <laughs> so, and, you know. So, yeah, I personally want LAX and Motown. You want LAX, and hopefully 
at least either one of them can pull through this year and win. Want, for the first time, I want the same teams as you want. <laughs> Like Motown, also solid. Also want them. So <laughs> yeah, I need EJ to fight because like EJ Belmo and Butcher are the only three of my are the only ones of my top ten favorite bowlers of all time who haven't won an Elias Cup yet. So yeah, I need them to win one of them. You you need them to? Yes, I'm on life support right now, and if they don't win, I'm gone. Were you born with a glass bones and paper skin? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say every time. That's what I say no. every time I have to tape up my hands. Yeah, I know. I saw. I saw the video. Oh no, because I say that to you every time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I but I also saw the video. I wa I've watched your videos, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm probably gonna watch this one and be like, wow, my voice is super annoying. <laughs> it's like, oh. All right. Well, talked about a lot of interesting stuff, and yeah, go LAX and go Motown. Hope you guys kick some ass this year. See ya.